and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today I'm going to be doing one of my many user training videos and this can also work for newer admins to kind of get a grasp on how people use Salesforce in their day to day. Today we're going to be going over how to convert a lead within Salesforce. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So I am currently on the homepage. I can go up here to the leads button up here or I can go up to the three by three and this is almost guaranteed to get you where you want to. If you don't see it up here in the navigation bar, you can go leads and it should just take you to the same exact place. All right, so as you can see, this shows us a list of our currently reviewed or currently viewed leads. This is what we like to call as, as a list view. So it takes a certain set of records or people as this is for leads and the list view is showing us the ones that we have recently viewed. If we wanted to change this up to something else, maybe what we could do is we could do all open leads. This would show us a different list view. And then we can go into, I'm gonna to go to J call as our lead. So leads are this really interesting blend of different other groups of things. So as you know, leads are people that we're reaching out to that may or may not convert into being a paying customer. But in Salesforce, instead of it going from just someone that you meet either through a purchase list or through social media or at an event, in Salesforce, you will go through and convert a lead into three other things typically. That's going to be an account, a contact, and a opportunity or an opportunity. And the difference between having a lead and the account contact and opportunity. It really depends on each company to company. And oftentimes, at least in my experience as an admin, what I've seen is that once the lead has shown significant interest in our product, then they are converted to an opportunity. And then the sales rep can continue working on them or this can be handed off to uh, another sales rep who is a little bit better at closing deals. I've often seen this where you have two different types of sales reps. You have one that works on gathering leads and qualifying leads. And then you also have like the account executive who only works on opportunities. And oftentimes whenever that switch or that handoff is between qualifying the lead and giving it to the account executive is usually right about where in the company you are going to convert that lead. So the lead is a really interesting group of data because it houses the preliminary data for the accounts, contacts, and opportunities. And so it has information that you'll find across all of those objects after this is converted, such as the name of the person, the company, their title, where this lead source came from, the industry, um, rating, number of employees. All of these pieces of information are going to be parsed out across the account contact and opportunity if and when it does become converted. So in the lead process, there are a few different things we can do. We can update all the different details that we have here. Maybe we gather more info on the number of employees that are at the company or what this person's title is at the company, maybe the annual revenue of the company, etc. One thing I do want to note is that the more information that you input here, the better the company can become at recognizing the leads that are most likely to convert. So let's take this example. If we had a company that had, um, or a few companies that had like 50 million in revenue and a few companies that had 100 million in revenue and we were to compare those two groups and the 50 million group, they were not converting as highly as the 100 million group, then we'd likely want to target more $100 million companies. And so our sales efforts and our outreach efforts can be more directed towards the group that converts the most. So that's my little spiel about entering in data. It's really important. It helps us draw conclusions later on and eventually makes your job a lot easier. So now let's go ahead and go through the process of converting this person. A few different ways we can go through the fun little bar that we have here and then select the converted status. So I selected converted and then we can select converted status or you can come up here and select convert. And then what this is going to do is it's going to parse everything out to the account, contact and opportunity. You don't necessarily have to select to create an opportunity, but you do need to select an account or create an account and contact. 
let's say the ABC company already had an account in here, I think it's always useful to go ahead and check to see if the company is there. So then we're not duplicating things and we have to merge things in the future. So that person does not have an account. They likely do not have a contact. I'm not going to check that. And then we can go ahead and choose some of the information here. So I'm going to say ABC123 as the opportunity. Uh, the naming convention comes from the account. So it's first little bit is going to be the account name. And then you'll likely have the rest of the opportunity name there. So let's say if this was us selling a bunch of computers, we would say ABC computer hardware um, for whatever date or however your company likes to do naming conventions for opportunities. And then there might be some additional information for you to enter in based upon what your company has said that they want to parse out and pull over. So we also have to choose the record type and it's gonna have me choose high cap here. Then again, we have that little checkbox. If we didn't wanna create an opportunity, we would check that. And then anything with a red asterisk is going to be required. So the record owner is required. Converted status is required. I'm gonna keep it as close converted and go ahead and convert that. So now from that one lead record, it has created the account, contact, and opportunity. And these are all, anything with blue is going to be a link. So I can either go back to leads, create a new task. I can go to the account, contact, and opportunity. I'm gonna to go to the contact and we can see some information that has been pulled over. So we have the phone number that's been pulled over, the lead source that's been pulled over, and that's about it. If you are an admin and you're looking to figure out how to bring over more information. I should be coming out with a video about that soon, but that is pretty much it when it comes to converting a lead within Salesforce. Of course, every company is going to be different based upon different scenarios. So it would be helpful to ask your manager what the, uh, the conversion qualification is, if it's going to be having that handoff from the lead generator to the account executive, or if it's going to be upon um, the the person signing uh, an engagement agreement or something like that. It just really depends on the company you're in and what their scenarios are. But again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're feeling generous. You can check out the courses on Salesforce down below or on salesforceupscale.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter at Emily Call MBA. And thanks so much. Have a good one.